Hello friends, a very warm welcome to Coding Techniques again. Today I am going to teach you how to dynamically change the size of the bottom sheet model. Okay, so that is going to be pretty interesting. Let's dive into this video right now. So I have already done all the computing and everything is done. So you just need to sit back and relax and check out the video. That's it. So I'll just directly take the example of the Uber Eats clone application I'm taking. I know I'm taking that example a lot many times, but yes, already it's built in such a manner that you can do a whole lot of stuff there, okay? So I already had a model there for our forget password, which we have already designed in few lectures back. You can just check it out. And if you're new or you haven't seen the Uber Eats series, you can watch it and it is not mandatory, I must tell you. You can simply check this out, whatever I'm doing, and you can just replicate that in your application. That's it. You don't need to like focus on the Uber Eats clone application if you haven't done that. If you want to do it, definitely you're free to use it up. Okay, let's get started now. I'll just go to the sign in component. And if you're having a home component, you can just get there. I'll go to the HTML at first. And in the HTML, this is my model, which I have already designed it up. This is a forget password model, which is designed in which I have a trigger. Then a CSS class is being given of inline model, but I don't think I'm using it anywhere. Let me just check it inline model. Am I passing it anywhere? Okay, I do only in the HTML, but I'm not using it up. So what you can do here in the SCSS, if you want to use it, then simply iron model dot inline model only for the inline model. I'm going to pass it up models that are available within this particular component okay now this will have a border radius so if i just click here you will see this kind of a stuff is been coming up and if i try to change this border radius to let's see five pixel you will see the changes here i'll click here again you can see is it changed but i can't make it out if i give it a zero then we can might we might make it out all right let's try it up okay no it is still the same so it is not getting impacted so let me leave it as it is for the timing. I'll just keep it as 10 pixel only. I don't know why it is not working. We'll figure it out later on. That's not our priority for the timing. Our priority is to work with the breakpoints and initial breakpoint and change it dynamically. So I have just passed the breakpoint and initial breakpoint. And this model will get triggered when you are clicking on the forget password, which is available in this particular P tag. I have just passed the ID here that is triggering this up. Okay. So you have seen the functionality means the basic model now in the ts file what exactly i have done is i will be using the keyboard one from the capacitor one so we won't be able to see the execution into the browser one but we will be able to see the execution in android and ios that's what i have uh, worked for and if you want for the browser one also then definitely you can do it up but uh, you need to work on with the touches okay so the main problem which we are facing here why exactly i'm trying to do this is because of this form one now you can see it is just scrolling towards the top and it is not looking great right that is why i just want to change the size of this particular model here for which i'll be using this keyboard that is installed by default i didn't do it because it is coming up with the packages itself if you just check the package.json file you will see this this is installed if it is not installed you can install it directly using npm i at capacitor slash keyboard or you can check the capacitor documentation also how you can do that up fine this is also explained to you now i think properly so i just need to go to the typescript file and explain you up the how exactly i have done that now in the typescript file what exactly i have done i just pass this event here and within this events it is accessing the keyboard keyboard will show as soon as the keyboard will show what am i doing i am calling a function called to move and passing 0.9 that will be the initial breakpoint it's going to change okay and if you are not sure about all the stuff let me just show you in the documentation of capacitor for the keyboard one this is how the events are being passed okay you can just go ahead and check this out but i am not focusing on that right now now what functionality i have made move to to the breakpoint which breakpoint that's you have passed in your html so it can only move to those breakpoints which you have passed it here if you pass any other breakpoint that is not available in this particular array that won't work remember this is very important to remember all right so now i'll get back to the ts file again let's close this all right so in the ts file 
this is the functionality that I've given this dot model dot set current breakpoint and I'm passing the breakpoint dynamic. Now, how do I get this model here? Because I'm using the view child in which I'm passing the model means this uh, forget password model that is the identifier that I gave to this particular model that I'm accessing here and which is of type iron model. Okay, so this is how you can initialize it up in view child decorator and then you can just access it in your move to or any other function name that you can give and you can just set the current breakpoint in this particular manner. Once that is done, this is very important like I already said and you need to check whether you are using a web app or not. If you are not using a web app, definitely you can access this particular sub because this keyboard plugin only works in the native devices, not in browser. That's important. You need to remember that. Okay. So as soon as the keyboard will open up, I'm just moving to the 0 0.9. That means to the highest one that we have in our array. And as soon as the keyboard is hidden, I'm moving back to 0 0.5 that we have said as the initial breakpoint earlier on. Okay. That's the only thing I'm doing. Nothing else. Now, once that is done, you need to create Android and iOS platforms, which I have already done and I have explained in the previous lecture. You can just check that out how to like run live reload one. All right. So Android and iOS are already added here and I have passed all the configuration, whatever it was required. I have passed it out. Then after doing that, let me try to run live reload now. So what am I going to do? Let me maximize it up and stop this Ionic serve. That's what we don't need now. Now I'll go for Ionic cap run Android dash L dash dash external. Let's run this up because my devices are already opened up here. This is the iOS one and this is the Android one. Well, I've used Xcode and Android Studio and just got this emulator and simulator to open up after that I'm doing that. Thing. and it is at the bottom Xcode and Android Studio you don't need to close it remember that now this browser one I can definitely close it okay so it's time to select the device I'll select this particular one that is already opened up here okay and in the other one I'm going to go for the iOS so ionic cap run iOS dash l dash dash external let's go for it to select iPhone 14 Pro so it's going to take a little bit of time to run and you need to remember that you need to update your Android Studio and Xcode properly. Everything should be up to date then only it's going to. All right, you can see both of them are starting to run. Now I'll just scroll and let's get started with this. Skip. Great. Now if I hit this forget password here and click on it. Okay, this is not working here. Let's check this out. What if I do it here? You can see this is working in the Android one. So for iOS, this doesn't work actually. That is why actually I just gave the permission only for Android uh, and for others, I have just didn't give it. But since it is being given, so I just thought of checking it up for, and uh, sorry, iOS also, but it didn't work. Well, it's written here in the configuration that uh, it is available for iOS also, the resize one. Okay, so where exactly we need to pass it in the, capacitor.config.ts file we need to pass it then only it's going to work maybe so let me just copy it let's try it up whether it works or not so i'll just get back and pass it into the capacitor where is it this is the one let's pass it here and check it out so i'll just paste it okay i get the option to import it style one i won't have other than that i think everything is good to go now let's check it out whether there is any change not exactly but this is working great for our Android one. So that is actually much better. And in the Android one, you can see this border one is not coming up. So basically for iOS, it is by default for Android. I think we need to give it. Where is it actually? Uh, let me just go to the HTML, not HTML, SCSS. And let me cut it from here. And I'm going to pass it in the global.scss. Let me pass it here for each and every one. Let's see whether it gets implemented or not. If I just hit this up, it's still not working actually. What if I remove this iron model? Will it work? Still, it is not working. Okay. All right. I made a mistake here. It should be underscore. Simple mistake. That is why it is not exact details that I need. Now it is working. You see, simple mistake which I did. That is why it was not working. That's great. It is sorted now. 
So the design is sorted. If I click here, it's working, but for iOS, I'm not happy like it is not scrolling. So there is no keyboard that is coming up actually here. That is another big issue. I need to have the keyboard, right? Which is not showing up. Okay, in this particular one, keyboard resize, I have few options, dot, body, ionic, native, none. So let me give native here, okay? So I think the native one will be fine. Let's try it up. Directly, it's not implementing, I think. So what I need to do, the keyboard is not coming up. I think in this simulated keyboard shows. So as of now, we didn't find a solution for iOS and for browser also. But I think there is one solution we can apply is to work with the ion input events that is on focus and sorry, ion focus and ion blur. So let's work with that and try it up. So I'm going to go to the uh, code again and I will jump into the reset password because that is the component that I'm calling within my ion model, which is having the form. Okay, which I didn't explain you if you're not using Uber, it's clone application, but don't need to worry. Here I have defined this ion input. And what am I going to do now is to have two events, ion focus, all right, is this the one? Yes, this is the one. I'll have a function input focus and we'll pass the event here. Okay, don't worry, I'll create it. Then I'm going to have ion blur. Basically what happens is when you are clicking on something that is focus is there, okay, on the input. And when you are just moving out of it, it is getting blurred. That is why these two events I'm getting triggered. Let's try it up. Let's try it. So in the component, I'm going to have something here called add output decorator, which will be used in order to transform our data to the model. So let me have focus that will be equals to new emitter and it will be of type event emitter of type any. All right. Let me set it to nothing. Let's keep it in this manner. Okay, the error is coming up because it is imported from a different one, which I, which I don't want. I need it from add angular core. Now it is fine. No error. I'll have one for the focus one and the other is for the blur. Let me pass it as blur. Now it's fine. So these two things I'm going to use whenever this ion, not ion, input focus function focus function is being called where I have a he event, all right, that is getting triggered and I'll log the value of it. Similarly, I'll have it for the blur one, input blur, all right. So these two are ready now. What am I going to do? I'll have another shell here in which I'm going to run ionic serve two because these things we can do in ionic server. So not a problem. All right, this is opened up. Let me hit on the skip one. Let's check it out whether the event is getting triggered or not. So if I click on it, then what's happening? Okay, this is getting triggered. And if I click somewhere else, let me just do one thing. Just pass here, focus and this one to be blur. All right, now let's check it out. So if I click on this forget password, this is coming up, remove everything. Click here, this is getting triggered, the focus one. And if I click somewhere else, then it is getting blur so this is working all right so it's not going to be that smooth because we will be transferring from one input to another but that's the only way i have right now i think so it's better to pass it here the events so it's gonna be this dot focus dot emit and i'm going to pass true here and once the blur is being called then i'm going to pass this dot blur dot focus sorry emit i'll set this to be true okay so this is done after doing this i'll go to the sign up component html and call this to here blur and before blur we need to call the focus i think that would look nice there is no pattern that you need to pass this one first or that one first i'll directly call the move to function within which i'm going to pass if it is a focus one then i need to move it to 0.9 Otherwise, I'm going to move it to, means if it is blurred, then I'll move it to 0.5 by default. Okay, that is what I'm going to do here. Now it's time to try it up whether it works or not. So working or live reload, have I stopped it? So it is still running and I can check in all the places. In fact, here too, if I just click on it and if I click on focus, you can see scrolling towards the top. And if I click anywhere else, it is scrolling towards the bottom. So this is also working. 
If I click again, it will go up. If I click outside, it will come back towards the bottom. Same way in our iOS one also, if I just open it up and click on it, you can see this is working, but it still it is not showing properly. But anyways, at least it is working, right? Because the keyboard is not showing up, that is the main problem. But ultimately, at least we can scroll the model towards the top and bottom using our keyboard plugin, not exactly the keyboard plugin, I would say, but actually the functionality dynamically we are able to. So I hope you like this particular video. If you like this video, please hit the like button to subscribe to the channel if you are new here. And let me know in the comment section, what are you looking for for the next video? Thank you so much for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.